welcome to today's class. Um, this is a, a more or less a theory class. So we're going to be talking about uh, recent advances in ultrasound because you do get a, a theory question from this, which is exactly what the title is, recent advances in ultrasound. Okay, so that's what I'm going to equip you with. What should you write in that answer? And also, you know, a, a little bit of uh, practical knowledge that you need uh, um, to optimize the images, right? So uh, both of those fronts we are going to be discussing today. Short class. Happy to see class at seven. Yeah, there was match today, no? <laughs> so eight o'clock, I will get you guys free. I'll get you uh, free much before eight, hopefully, because... Not a lot. Uh, one of the most important uh, advances that is elastography, I've already covered as a separate talk. So I won't be talking about that. That's a special, uh, you know, short note which gets asked uh, particularly. So we've done that already. I hope you have seen that class. And uh, also, my screen is not getting shared. And also, I'm going to be uh, taking another class on uh, contrast media, ultrasound contrast agents. Okay, so that will also be a separate class because that's also a separate short note. CUS, the physics of it, I'll talk about it briefly today. But ultrasound contrast media, I'll talk about it in a different video, a short recorded video. So let's start then. So what are the things that you have to write about? So whenever you have any long theory answer, you know, it's a very good idea to start talking about it in terms of uh, bullet points okay you uh, talk about it in terms of bullet points so this is how your answer should begin that these are all the points that we want to discuss right in terms of the advances in ultrasound elastography is bold italic because we have already covered it right so that's what i'm not going to be addressing so we are going to be talking about all of these all of you must be aware of thi at least and spatial compounding because this is something we use in a day-to-day -day image uh you know ultrasound imaging whenever you're doing and you want a better image less clutter less speckle then you want to use thi and you want to use spatial compounding so this i hope you have heard these terms even persistence is something you know all of the terms which are there on the top uh, right corner of your ultrasound screen will have something written as persistence i hope you have noticed it if you have not next time you do ultrasound see there will be persistent written there and it's either low medium or high you know so we'll talk about what that is We'll talk about the physics behind CUS and it is more or less something to do with harmonic imaging only. Then we'll talk about extended field of view. Again, something that you would have used, which is panoramic view. 3D ultrasound also, if you are doing orbs, if you're doing, you know, gyne imaging, then you would have used 3D and 4D ultrasound. Fly through is a pretty recent technique, very theoretical as of now. And we have fusion imaging. So fusion imaging also may be, you know, something that you might use in the future. If you get into interventional radiology, you do a lot of prostate biopsies and stuff. You can use this, right? So these are the headings under which we are going to be talking about. Out of these, elastography is a separate long answer. CUS is a separate long answer. And sometimes even tissue harmonic imaging can be given as a short note, right? So that's the important bit here. The first point is tissue harmonic imaging. So normally, you know how ultrasound wave travels. There are two theories out of which one theory is that there is going to be compression, then rarefaction, compression, rarefaction. This is known as the linear transmission of ultrasound waves. Wherever it transmits, it's going to have this compression, rarefaction. So this is what is known as the linear transmission of ultrasound waves. If you have seen the lecture, how many of you have seen the lecture on elastography? So in that, we also talked about a perpendicular transmission, right? So if this is how your compression rarefaction is going down the medium, you have these perpendicular waves which emerge, which are called as shear waves. So that is what is being dealt with in shear wave elastography. Here we are talking about the same vertical transmission of ultrasound waves, but now it's not linear. It is non-linear transmission, meaning that this compression rarefaction is not at an equal distance. It, it's, at an, it's at a multiple, right? So you would have read in physics also there is second harmonic, then there is third harmonic. So here you can see now that if this is my fundamental frequency, now my harmonics are traveling at double the frequency. It's called second harmonic. If within one compression rarefaction distance, if there are three 
passages then that's called third harmonic you know so harmonics are at a multiple of the fundamental frequency what we use most commonly in imaging is what is being shown to you which is the second multiple double hai, hai na? you can sense this it's at a double frequency so this is called as the second harmonic understood so that's the fundamental thing that i'm not using the linear frequency so this is what is getting transmitted and this is what is going to be reflected back so the transducer is interested in picking up the harmonic waves that is what this means so this is where i use no non-linear transmission that's the first buzzword that you have to write whatever i'm highlighting are your buzzwords so because this is a physics class it's information heavy so i've written a lot of it down so that you have bullet points you know rather than usually in clinical classes i'll just show you images but here because you're supposed to write a theory answer i've given you the points right so you have what you need to write in front of you so out of that i'll highlight the buzzwords you must remember so non-linear transmission, first buzzword, we use the multiple and most commonly we are going to be using the second harmonic. Now, who produces the harmonic? That's very important. Transducer has nothing to do with the harmonics. We are not producing the harmonics. The tissues are producing the harmonics. So harmonics is physiological. It's not something that we advance career ultrasound ko no what is the advances we are now able to pick up the harmonics so what you need to remember is that the harmonics are being generated by the tissue and it's going to be deeper tissues which generate it right is that making sense so two conditions in which we can use these harmonics provided they are low frequency high amplitude so we are interested in a lower frequency of harmonic imaging that's just a theory and as i said they are not produced Produced by the transducer they're produced by the deep tissue itself right so now how can i use it so imagine being a transducer imagine you are an ultrasound transducer Ab aapke paas fundamental wave bhi aari hai, which is my main wave which is your high ampli which is your main fundamental beam jo aapne bheja tha. so this is my fundamental wave which is coming and i also have harmonic wave which is coming so then how can i utilize the harmonic wave so for that i have two things right so for that there is a separate knob for this in all machines yeah it's a button right so there's a separate button thi likha hoga na it's right in front of your face like just close to freeze it will be thi I, if you have not seen this button, then you have not seen the machine. Okay. So you see the machine now. There will be THI written there. You can't understand harmonic. Right. So this is the fundamental compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction. Harmonic are generated. They are special waves, which are your machine doesn't have it. See again, most machines have it. Okay. Maybe what machine are you using? You're just using a portable ultrasound, it may not have it, but most of the good machines have. Okay, you can still check again. All right, so G Logic must have it. Okay, you can go back and check. Okay, abhi agar ho samne, to abhi dekho. right, anyways, so most machines have it. So, what are we seeing here? So, one of you was not understanding harmonics. So, see, it is the frequency, right? It's the second to third frequency. That is what we are using. There is There hasn't been a class so far on CVG anomalies. Um, maybe we can take one in the next month. I can plan, okay? I like CVG a lot. We can do that. So, so basically, how, do, how does the machine decide? For those of you who are not understanding, you know, just try... Uh, to see this again it's a lot of core physics not a lot of understanding much of theory you know so just let me go on with my train of thought because if i keep going going back and forth no nobody will understand anything so fundamental is compression rarefaction compression rarefaction harmonics are at a frequency which is higher than that so second or third harmonic is what we choose how does a machine decide what to take whether to take fundamental or second harmonic how do i make the machine utilize harmonics one is filtration right you filter out the fundamental beam and have the machine only take the harmonic right so that's filtration but that did not give us very very good images so that's why we are now using more commonly uh, another technique which is called phase inversion you must have heard phase inversion if you have ever read ceus in your life you would have heard phase inversion what am i doing here so 